We are now uh, talking to one of the most brilliant minds in uh, modern uh, history, literally. Jonathan Gray is an ancient archaeologist. And for those people out there that are arrogant, atheists, agnostics, or believe in some other ism, there's only one ism, is to say, the way, the truth, and life, which is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of estimated 460 quadrillion galaxies in our known universe. And our universe is literally a tiny speck in a little larger universe. But our God is so awesome and so loving, he can literally count every hair in our head, cares about our destiny, and all he requires is that we know and love him, and he will bless us. He will remove the, the sting of our current situation, whether we're dying or we're profiting billions, but we're dying physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and relationally, and also take away the sting of ignorance. And one of the greatest ignorances is those who say communicate with the dead. And I recall uh, just before today's chapter, which is 17, the idea of extraterrestrials. A lot of people are into this ET cult of one form or another. They're also into the communication with the dead, and other, other than the first king of Israel did it, when he, the uh, witch of Endor summoned up uh, the so-called spirit of the prophet Samuel because uh, King Saul wanted to consort with him and actually get his wisdom. And so the, the witch cultured up, conjured up what appeared to be uh, Samuel, but in fact was not, but was a, uh, an imposter. And so this is very, very important to understand that we have imposters. We have a lot of people thinking as the world heads toward crisis in Fukushima, financially, worldwide, we are plunging toward a Shiite war. The Prince of Peace will come back soon. He's going to put back, as we said yesterday in the program, with Ted Shubat and Avi Lipkin, Ted being a descendant of the Palestinians. His father actually was a PLO member. He's now a Christian, and so is Walid Shubat. Avi Lipkin, who's a, a Torah Jew in Jerusalem, we had him on the program. We need to put back the stick of Judah and the stick of Joseph or Ephraim, and God is going to accomplish this. And he steps in is outside of the continuum of space and time and all reality, because God is the author of all. And we want to speak against these evils. So those think that the Pleiadians or the Andromedans or some other bunch of so-called aliens like the return of the Nibiru are going to save us. No. What we need to do is repent. In fact, the spirit in the last words of the book of Malachi was, I shall send the spirit of Elijah before the great and terrible days, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. And that is a promise from God. And today, the first evil that we're going to strike, again, remember, evil is not the opposite of good, it's the absence of it. Uh, light is not the is not the opposite of uh, darkness is not the opposite of light it's the absence of it and good is simply the absence uh, is, is the opposite is not the sorry, evil is not the opposite of good it's the absence of it so today we're going to strike the light into the darkness of those who quote communicate with the dead or ET or these other spirits or the ascended masters that are leading them off into some kind of false cult that will destroy them not only physically financially and make them spiritually destitute and destroy them. So this title of this chapter, E.T.'s and the Occult Dead Lover Returned. Yeah, I, I love the titles you use, uh, Jonathan, so let's get into this book. Okay, Bill. Um, as you said, there are imposters around, and um, we, we spoke in our last broadcast about the, the Legion of Lucifer, who are uh, with God, uh, the, the, the opposite, uh, are both... Uh, were active and guiding history to its planned climax. And we'd better believe it, although these are normally invisible to us, these evil forces, internet, interdimensional beings, they're indeed here with us, and they're intensely active. And we've got the messengers of light, the messengers of Lucifer engaged in a relentless conflict for every one of us, for our loyalty and for our future. Uh, they're in a tug of war for every person on earth. Exactly. And, so um, let's talk about some of the, the current situations. Right in Ronnie Reagan's, uh, in Ronald Reagan's, literally, uh, White House, he had a spiritist that used uh, communication with the dead and a form of perverted astrology, not the ancient astrology that was used by the ancient Hebrews and before, that were godly, that understood the star signs, were actually giving a, the plan of God's salvation for mankind on earth, uh, but a perversion of it that later became the Kabbalah, and all the evils of modern spiritism that was controlling the kings of Europe, looking at the entrails like uh, 
uh, Alexander the Great would look at the entrails of animals, or the ancient Roman leaders like Nero would look at the, the literally spread feces of bulls to determine the future. I mean, it's just disgusting uh, what our modern leaders are doing. And of course, in the George in the in the White House now, with uh, none other than Barack Obama, there's a Centauria altar, an altar to the voodoo gods, right in the White House, because his mother-in-law is a voodoo priest. S. So he, he's, as the leader of America, he's trying to dedicate America to voodooism. Right. And, well, the thing is he's dedicating us to uh, bisexuality and gay uh, situations, which are a evil. Uh, he's destroying the future of the population by bringing in Obamacare, which is Eugenicare. He wants to destroy the military so we have no preparedness to deal with Islam or our possible enemies. And yet he also wants to get rid of the safety social net, which... Uh, many of the people that believe in von Mises economics and I rail against them, including Ron Paul, who thinks that this is a good idea. It's not. Uh, I have plans, and I'm going to write them up and put them up on clay and iron that will give specifics of what we can do. Many of those ideas you'll see uh, on LaRouche Foundation, but I'm going considerably farther, and they're based on biblical principles that God laid out in the original, original Republic of Israel, where the tithe was given to make a priest class that would be the doctors, the public health officials, the and they were servants of God, and they could be called to go and work in the temple, one in the 24 families. And if they were unrighteous, God killed them on the spot when they poured the blood over the horns of the altar. So God doesn't tolerate these things. And people think that God is like either a big Santa Claus, or uh, they think of him as a devil because he destroyed people that did things like making their children go through the fire for Moloch and Baal. Or ancient kings like King Saul of Israel, who literally went and consorted with the devils, and uh, God saw what he did, because you can't do things in hiding to the creator God, and he struck him down and had him literally wanting to commit his suicide on the battlefield on his own sword. I mean, it's just, these lessons people need to learn today, including our current leaders and the future leaders of this nation and all nations, that the only government that God accepts is a republic where the least and the from the in utero to the eldest of our population are protected from the majority, not by the majority. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, Dr. Bill, have you ever been across to the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California? No, I haven't. Um, Tell me about it. Um, Sarah Winchester was the widow of the, the, the um, inventor of the Winchester rifle. Ah, okay. And and when he died in the late 1800s, um, I think around about 1884, Sarah Winchester was visited by uh, beings who said, if you do what we say, you will never die. You won't have to die like your husband has. Really? They said, just keep building onto this house, and so long as you keep on building, you will always be alive. And so okay. this house became a monstrosity of additions and, and, and afterthoughts that kept on kept the builders busy year after year. Uh, and interestingly, it was based on the number 13. And in the rooms, there were 13 ceiling panels, uh, 13 steps leading from one room to another, um, all, all sorts of weird things. In fact, you'd go down some steps to go to the adjoining room, then up more steps. And this was simply just to keep the builders busy so she'd never die. And uh, when she ran out of ideas, she would simply come back to the builders and say, look, if you will um, just wall in the furniture in the corner of the room, and then the next room we'll wall in the furniture. And so they started putting rooms inside rooms just so that they would never stop work. Wow. And um, I, I've been through this house. It's absolutely incredible. It's like nothing else on earth. Well, it's like entering um, the, the mind of someone who's demonically possessed. And people that saw the movie last, a few years ago, called Avatar, they have to understand that the ancient technologies of avataring transdimensionals, and that's why when we talk about ETs and the 2012 and the Nibiru and so on, or somehow thinking we're going to be saved by extraterrestrials, what we're dealing with, what we're dealing with, no matter what part of the, quote, the galaxy or the universe they're coming from, they're transdimensionals. They are not here by permission. They're here by violating the primary directive, and they're invading man's mind, spirits, and politics to destroy man. Welcome back, and, and people say, how is this relevant? Well, let's just give some good examples. 
If you were to go to the Bilderberg meeting, Bilderberg 2012, which is happening right now, uh, if you were to go to the United Nations or look at world leaders or go to the high level of politics in any nation, you'll find them populated to the gunnels with high-level Masons. Some of them are white hats that appear good. Some of them are black hats. Some of them are just very deviant. Uh, many of them are openly and overtly bisexual because pederasty and perverted sex are involved because they're often literally part of the sex magic rituals and human sacrifice that goes on in these families literally through the centuries is a spiritual technology of demonic possession and avataring that allows them to create a super class of individuals, which is why my other ministry and the name of the other website is called Clay and Iron. It says they shall mingle themselves in chapter 2 of Daniel with the seed of men, clay with the iron. And the reason is the clay is a human flesh, the iron are these is these transdimensional entities that people think, oh, Dr. Deagle, this is not psychiatry, this is ridiculous. It's not. Uh, I've personally seen and have been trained in psychiatry and interpersonal psychology. I've seen situations that transcend the idea that this is just disturbed serotonin reuptake inhibitors or disturbed brain injury or a tumor or anything else. No, we're dealing with things that you have to understand are real. Now, when you have families like the Rodham family, R-O-D-H-A-M, which Hillary Clinton is a Rodham, became a Clinton, you're dealing with families that go back many centuries that are involved with human ritual sacrifices, sex magic rituals. So she had a spiritual and a sexual orgasm when she heard that Mr. Gaddafi was was filleted with a steel pole shoved up inside him as he bled to death internally, or when she hears about a bombing and destroys uh, the so-called death of Osama bin Laden, who died of renal failure years before, but of course, for, for at least for the cameras and for YouTube, they put this on. And we look at someone like Obama, who comes from a spook family, and the high levels of all these secret agencies, and the top being the Omega Project, it was conceived by the Society of the of the Black Sun, in Nazi Germany in the 1930s and completed by George Bush Sr., or should I say George Bush Scherf, which is his real name, who's related to the manager for Nikola Tesla. People don't understand exactly what Nikola Tesla was, and I'll explain in some of the future shows. What they have to understand is cavorting with transdimensional entities is the standard operational procedure for all the elite on the planet. It doesn't matter if you're a Rothschild, if you're the head of the United Nations, like uh, Sun, like the moon, who's the guy, the United Nations chairman. It doesn't matter if you're Obama and his family, who has a centenary altar there to cavort with demonic spirits for the voodoo, his mother-in-law. It doesn't matter if you're high-level so-called communist that says everybody else is atheistic, but just like Karl Marx, he had a black altar and was a Sabbatean, satanic high priest in the Kabbalah. At the same time, he was telling everybody else he was an atheist. So people need a grasp that this is not a peripheral issue, this is the central issue. As it says in Ephesians, we struggle not against flesh and blood. We don't just struggle against arguments and ideas. We struggle against spiritual entities and agendas that transcend the capacity of the normal mortal mind to understand the level, the depth, the absolute 100% vileness of the evil we are facing. And the solution which is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, his blood, his saving grace to inspire us with ideas to survive Fukushima and global disasters and to get us away from these vile leaders. These vile leaders like Obama, Hillary Clinton, and all the other leaders who are given over, like the high-level Mormons when they are doing a baptism, ritual baptism for the dead. There's even discussions and questions asked of Mr. Romney. Uh, why doesn't the Mormon church stop, quote, baptizing for the dead for Jews that died in the Holocaust? Do people know what really transpires in the summoning of the dead? Do they understand what's really going on? No. And they don't want to ask those questions because they think it's peripheral. It's it's the late night stuff when you're real sleepy and insomniac. And you don't want to really go to sleep. You just want to hear something weird. No, this is not a peripheral issue. When you don't even know who Obama really is or who his real daddy is, if it's Malcolm X or if it's his father who is 42%, uh, you know, who is you know ninety four percent Arab and eight uh, percent black? You don't want to hear about it. If why was he in Suharto's palace in uh, in Indonesia? What what's really going on here? Well, we're, what's really going on is demonic. We call deviltry, literally deviltry. So let's get into it. You know, the, the next section here: killed in Vietnam because people need a grasp. Why does Dr. Deagle spend time on this when we could be talking about nutraceuticals in Fukushima? Because if we don't get the spiritual blinders off, 
We will never take the actual steps to fix their politics, our spirituality, and our literally our weddedness to the Most High God to give us inspiration to survive the disasters coming to destroy our world. In other words, we have to heal the spirit first before the body and mankind is saved. Uh, as you were saying, Bill, we're not up against mere human enemies here. It's opponents who are not human, spirit enemies, diabolic and powerful. Right. And, and, it, these and people have to underestimate them. They're in rebellion against uh, the God of heaven. Exactly. And, and, and people underestimate their intelligence planet. either. And their malevolence. They think, well, just think of it. Think of an intelligence that's been, been around for eons, literally eons. Think of intelligence that are not limited by time and space, that have some limited knowledge of the past, present, and the future, and are trying to steer the timelines of human history by interference, by literally avataring our leaders, by literally setting up sex magic rituals and human sacrifice to literally have these parasitic avataring monstrosities attached to little children like the l young little girl Hillary Clinton before she was pubescent and, and exposed horrors so it would allow her shattered spirit to go through Reiki and mind control and become literally a monstrosity. Uh, think, and I pray for these people. I pray for Hillary Clinton. I pray for Obama. I pray for these leaders that, that are the monstrosities that are the people of clay and iron. They, are, they appear human. They almost smell human. But you know there's something missing. What's missing is Jesus. What's missing is that their spirit has been subjected to a demonic entity that's so vile that people just don't discern it. Their spiritual eyes are not open. They can't see it. I can. And that's the problem is people have to understand we're at the time of the end. The question that God's asking is, will you repent? Will you turn? Will you see with my eyes what you're seeing? Will you wrestle not against flesh and blood? Will you wrestle against the spiritual powers here that are about to crush mankind if you don't repent? And part of that repentance is just to read your book, which is beforeus.com, the, the Forbidden Secret, and then challenge yourself intellectually and spiritually to say, is this real, and what should I do about it? Yeah. And uh, Lucifer, we must remember that Lucifer and his gang can materialize. They can take physical form and interact with our dimension. And they right. are just as real as you and I. They've got consciousness, they have personality, and uh, they... It appear in spiritualistic seances. Right. Now, there are many... I could, I could spend the whole hour just talking about nothing but his, people I know who have been involved in this, including my own grandfather. Oh, uh, by the way, he became a, a Christian before he died. In Australia. Yeah, he became a Christian before he died, and, and of course he had first-hand knowledge of the powers of darkness, and he repented of it before he died, four to five years before he died, because he... He used to understand and deal with these, and he was also a physician. So he had a rational mind, but again, there's lots of people that are rational, high-level Masons and high-level Mormons and people with high IQs. And intelligence on the, on the physical level does not protect you from your ego being massaged or from being given the enticement. I call the enticement of Aladdin, where you rub the lamp of the demonic entities. It will give you powers and abilities and knowledge. Uh, that's what... Saul saw it in ancient Israel. God struck him down on the battlefield. We don't want that curse to be on America. Back in a moment. back and uh, let's get into some of the specifics that you cover in this remarkable book uh, Jonathan fellow people think oh that's peripheral and you'd be surprised how many world leaders they may not have people spreading out entrails on their desks or in the uh, Oval Office or elsewhere or they may not be you know using the entrails of animals but they are using uh, all kinds of technologies in fact people like the Rothschilds and so they don't read the daily newspaper they use technology, spiritual technologies, demonic technologies, cavorting with spirits to change history, to change the timeline. And a lot of these things, in fact, people don't understand that they have used amplification like the LIDA technology in Russia, like DARPA and these special agencies like NSA or no such agency. And they have electronic and other technologies for amplifying these effects, like the Delta T antenna systems, etc. And most people don't realize just how dangerous they are, even including battlefield weapons that affect consciousness and awareness of reality. Uh, people need to be aware. That's why 
what we often called is the zonkeys, when you feel like there's something spiritually going on where, quote, there's people praying against us in our ministry of nutraceutical clay and iron, or when we know something terrible is happening in the world, we pray against that evil. Uh, it's very real. This is not imaginary. This is something that when you become in touch not only with yourself, but of every other person on earth, when you get in touch with reality, then you start to realize there's a much more wide scape of not only earth, but beings, not only in the physical world, but in the spiritual world that you start to become aware of that are both very good and very evil. And if you're not aware of them, just like Hansel and Gretel in the forest, laying down crumbs to get back from grandmother's uh, cottage in the in the forest, you're going to be eaten by the wolf if you're not aware. Oh, yes. Um, grieving wives or husbands are, are, are sitting ducks. Uh, many have reported having their deceased spouse talk with them in the night, and in some mm. cases they're materialized and, cu and cuddled, Bill. Right. And in seances, these evil agents play the ultimate cruel trick because they pose as departed loved ones to the bereaved who are groping for comfort. And this is how they get a direct line to the soul. And then it's just a short step from there to control of the person. Yeah. And the spiritism, I don't like to call it spiritualism, I, it's rather spiritism. Spiritism, It's yeah. very attractive because it promises knowledge of the future and communication with dead ones who, who are, are beloved by those who are left behind. And today there are lots of messages coming from the spirit realm that are accepted simply because they contain information that supposedly no one else but a loved one would know. Yeah, or, or the given information, for example, most people don't realize how many Hollywood stars, stock traders, billionaires, people go to spiritists to actually manipulate the stock market because they get advanced knowledge, not insider trading, but real insider trading because they're using demonic entities to actually know where the future stock trades will occur. And they're not always right, but they're right enough that they're actually making a lot of money and or making right career decisions and right decisions and they're Hollywood artists, etc. People don't understand how much the dark side is being manipulated like Darth Vader and Darth Sidious, you know, literally in Hollywood and major financial circles that are manipulating the powers of this planet. People just think, oh, that's just a peripheral issue, Dr. Deagle, you're making this up. Just go to L.A. and find out how many of these people are around. Go to, to New York City, go to Paris, go to Moscow, go to, to Beijing, and you'll find how many are using I Ching cards and supposed communists and bur billionaire uh, leaders of the Communist Party, and how many of them are using the spiritualistic techniques. And, or go to uh, the giant gambling casinos of Las Vegas or overseas in, uh, in China, and you go, what? I mean, this is part and parcel of the whole thing that's manipulating our planet. Oh, yeah. And, and when a medium at a seance enters a trance, a control spirit takes over and allegedly introduces the spirit of a dead person. But in reality, the unseen visitor is a familiar spirit who intimately knows the dead person and is able to impersonate them, to, to uh, recite back family secrets and to give personal details when called upon. Right. And in this way, even close relatives are tricked into believing they're hearing their dead loved one. Right. Yeah, in other words, they and have limited access to information about your relatives or limited access to a timeline of the future where they try to manipulate you into believing. So you don't believe the Most High God. You believe these lesser gods, demigods, and transdimensional spirits. So you literally give up your life like this woman in San Jose that built 160 rooms in her home, hoping that if she kept on building, she wouldn't die. Yeah, but, but, I, but uh, she died. Uh, yeah, she did and die. The, yeah, the yeah. spirits are, are liars. They're willing to lie. If they, uh, they have all the cards. They have shrewdness, convincing information, a willingness to lie, and the advantage of being invisible or the ability to appear visible. Well, we look at and that. And by say, revealing yeah. hidden things, they inspire confidence in the, the, the person, and so the person puts their trust in them. And this, of course, diverts them from where their trust needs to lie if they to be saved for eternity, and that is Jesus Christ. And Lucifer and his agents are mortal sworn enemies of Jesus Christ and his rescue plan. Exactly. Yeah, and, and people need to understand that many of the, even the different religious groups have called information from these that have literally given them military, spiritual, or preparedness benefits so they get further sucked into the vortex of trusting in these spirits for their guidance instead of the, their prayer life, their personal morality, and just common sense. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd like to just share with you, Dr. Bill, uh, and something that happened uh, in the United States during the Vietnam War. Yes. Uh, this, this will show just how uh, the whole thing is a hoax. An American soldier was reported killed in Vietnam. His grieving mother was told by a friend that if she came along to their meeting, she'd meet her dead son. At the meeting, her friend was proved right when the dead son, apparently, appeared. And his mother was so happy and emotional, they hugged and kissed and told each other how much they loved one another. And then the son said, I must return to heaven. Well, the mother went home that night, very happy. And sometime later, she answered a knock on the door. When she opened the door, there was her son dressed in his military uniform. Uh Now, he'd been reported killed in Vietnam, but here he was. He had returned unexpectedly from Vietnam, and what a in the shock flesh. that was. In the flesh. In the flesh. And her son explained how his group had been cut off by the Viet Cong and captured, and the U.S. Army had reported them dead. But now they'd been found and rescued and given an immediate pass for home leave. And so the mother said, but who was it? Who was it that I hugged and kissed down at the local church? Yes, it was a charismatic church that had put on the seance, believe it or not. Right. In fact, uh, one of the things i got to mention, and this is a, to interrupt you for a second, in Colorado Springs I have the discernment of voices. And one of the things that happens is in these churches, they'll sometimes do what's called the gift of tongues, which if it's operating correctly is a wonderful blessing. But most of the time it's not. And I said to the pastor, I said, stop it immediately. I said, because the tongues that are being spoken are not of God, they're demonic. And that's a lot of times the things that go on in so-called even Christian churches are not of God. They're of the dark side. They're manipulating dark entities and powers that they have no business doing because they're all involved with things that, to me, are a form of spiritual necromancy. Well, you can't call it that. You've got to call a spade a spade, Dr. Bill. I'm glad you do. That's one thing that I think sets you out different from most radio broadcasters. You're not afraid to speak the truth, no matter who hears it. I'm ready to take my stripes and my spittle from those that listen, whether there are supporters and our supporters love us, and the ones that don't support us hate us. They hate us straight down to our bone marrow because, as it says in the Bible, those who are saved are a stench of death to those who are not. And people are not saved, not because they're not good people, because a lot of them have just decided sequentially to make bad decisions, one after the other, or their bad experiences, or they'll blame it's all my relatives. I was forced to participate in these sex magic rituals. Look, 20 years ago, I was given this option to work to be an understudy for the Pindar. I've been giving multiple options to work for the dark side, and I rejected them because I got to know the love of the Most High God. So you can't blame your circumstances, your ancestry, or how many people cursed you for the thousands of years. You can accept only one thing. You're saved by the blood. Not by actions, not by intentions, not by anything we do, but by the blood of the Most High God who came here to teach us the way. When we come back, we'll teach you that way. No matter what you've done in the past, there is a pathway back to the light. Welcome back, and uh, in this segment, you got some interesting clues about this. It's not a peripheral issue, and it's going to be a good lineup for our next chapter. Um, Please continue, uh, Jonathan, because people need to grasp exactly why this is important and also why, quote, repentance. And I'm talking about repentance. Well, for example, it just came up with a committee now after more than a year to fix Fukushima. People say, why did it take so long? Why are we given alternatives of Obama on one side, who's now our, quote, first gray president, and then we have Romney, I call Flip, Hananiah Romney, says, don't worry. You, Christian Wright, can accept a Mormon that believes that God was a man on a planet around a star called Kolob at one time. You can believe that you could do a ceremony, and I was a Mormon bishop, in front of some of the play acted as Satan that says, of the doctrines and covenants and the pearl of great price, man must fall, knowing both good and evil, so he can become as God. You have to believe that a president has a mother-in-law that has a Santeria altar that still goes in front of the public and says, I'm a Christian in front of Christians, but when he's in Tahrir Square, says he's a Sunni Muslim. You have a man with a literally a zero background that's available because he's a spook. And you know darn well as a 32nd degree Mason uh, that Obama is a Satanist. And so is Romney. 
And so is any high-level Mason. And so is every leader of every corporation in every country on earth. And any politician who is, quote, in the public eye, literally cavorts with trans-dimensional entities. And once you reach the 17th level, the York Rite of Masonry, you know that you're serving Satan because the name Yabalon, Yahweh, Baal, and Osiris, the god of the underworld, is none other than one of the many hundreds of names for the Dark One, literally the, the Dark Lord of Destruction. The, the, the satan, satan, Satan himself, and people think, oh, we're just making this up. It's not important. Our society is built on science. Well, how about the science of the spirit, which is in the Bible? The, the Bible is physical science, astronomical science, geographic science, geological science, but it's also spirit science. And if you don't grasp that, you're going to end up getting destroyed. Uh, this is a, a, an issue of great importance, as you say. Now, um, if only that mother, the mother who actually thought she was communicating in the seance with her dead son, who was not dead at all, but alive, and came back and proved it to her, and yet this being that she was talking to resembled her son in every minute detail, Bill, from the smile, the dimple, and even the voice, and yet it was not her son. Now, if only she had acquainted herself with the Bible. Right. Now, uh, let's there's, make a there's qu- passages that would have made it very, very clear to this clever seance deception. Now, before we go to the end of this segment, I want you to get into an area which you're an expert on, which is the connection between Satanism and the occult and the so-called rise of the ufology cults. Now, people need to grasp how bad this is and how even the transfer of technology to our military industrial intelligence complex is literally purely satanic. Most people don't realize most of the senior leaders up here in Pasadena, California for Jet Propulsion Labs were high-level Satanists. They don't know that and say, well, that seems kind of weird. That's an interesting kind of factoid, Dr. Deagle. Why is that important? Tell us why. Well, if it's important, and the whole issue is important because there's a battle for every person's soul. And uh, Jesus Christ has died for us, he shed his blood for us, and if we're covered by his blood and we accept his spirit into our lives, we have heaven on earth and we have eternal life. If we do not accept that, uh, we are likely to be deceived by uh, things like seances and, and, and supposed ET appearances and will fall for whatever they want to give us because they are very uh, articulate and experienced liars. And if we allow ourselves to be tricked like that, we have no hope for the future. Our future is gone. Yeah. That's yeah. how important it is. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, another principle I want to teach in this program is a half-truth is a 100% lie. And people need to grasp how serious this is. Uh, we had a comment yesterday that one of our listeners uh, in Korea picked up that I didn't make a comment right away, but I will when we had Avi Lipkin on, and I need to correct this today so you understand where my perspective is on it. And he said how all these terrorists, these Islamic terrorists, did you know drove these airplanes into the Twin Towers. Everyone knows that I presented this five years ago at the Vancouver 9-11 Truth Conference, and I've said it repeatedly in this program, and every lab in the world has refused to do testing of radioisotopes. And we have the dancing Israelis who were there involved, because I know from my own military intelligence contacts that the Israeli Mossad nuclear division is the trigger finger of a larger organization, the CIA, MI5 and 6, and a larger organization yet called the Global, uh, if you want to call oversight, called Omega. People need to understand that the, in, the Mossad is just a, a, a finger on the hand of death. And they have to understand that the Sabbatean Jews, which are not the as Jesus said, the synagogue of Satan, they have to understand that they've deceived even many of those people that are well-intentioned Jews that even talk to our ministers because they believe the lie that so-called a few jets burning uh, jet fuel at 1,600 degrees could burn off two inches of asbestos and vaporize the nanoparticles uh, girder six foot across of hardened steel and giant skyscrapers. Not thermologically possible. If you work out the quantum mechanics and the heat transfer, the only thing that could do it is not superthermate, which can do cutting, but nuclear explosions and i have the actual intelligence of exactly what they did even the jets that they there so if you want to hear a correction i will do it on the air when i bring avi back but everybody needs to know one thing that's unique about this program and what i am commanded by the most i got to do is tell the whole truth 
all the time. Whether or not it results in people saying, that's it, I'm not buying another damn vitamin from you, I'm not going to contact you, I'm not going to support you, I'm going to do everything I can to destroy your ministry. Guess what? I, I pray for you because those who come against the spirit of those who speak in the voice of the Most High God as a prophet and a witness to save people, to save countries, to save the world and mankind because we're on the precipice of destruction, I can't say God help you because at this point there is no help if you start cursing those who bring the truth to save your butt and save your country and save your world. So you better think twice about doing anything evil because when you touch those who are anointed, like Jonathan Gray, and I mean you need to touch them positively, meaning order his books and videos, you need to make sure you support our ministry with prayer, you need to purchase our nutraceuticals and not go elsewhere, you need to understand that you, when you do that, you're praying literally by your actions to support the truth out there because we really do love people of every nation and color like the code of Joseph. And if you don't heed these warnings, and that means leaders right up to the billionaires and millionaires, they know this is the truth. When they gather in places like the castle of uh, up in Northern California, the, you know, this billionaire family or that billionaire family, and I won't mention them, the, the name of the family that's involved, they know what's going on. They're fully aware because they, when they go to Bohemian Grove, which they're going to do shortly, they know exactly what they're doing when they do the ceremony before this giant owl of the burning of care. They know it when they cavort with transdimensional spirits that are involved with prostitution, male and female, and pederasty, and human sacrifice, either ritual or virtual or real. They, need, they know what they're doing. And people out there say, that's just an anomaly. No, it's not. And that's why the UFO phenomena is so important. Tell us about it in this closing minutes, because I want to get into this in the next show much more. Yeah. Well, the UFO phenomena and spiritism are totally linked. And as you say, we'll get into that in detail on the next show, Dr. Bill. Could I just uh, quote a couple of uh, scripture texts for anyone who doubts that, that what we've been saying today is true? Yes. That the dead cannot come back. Uh, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, The living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that's done under the sun. There is no work, no device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither you go. And back in the book of Job, he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He that he shall not return to his house any more, neither shall his place know him any more. In other words, the dead cannot come back to their loved ones at home. Uh, the dead are under the uh, are in the graves. That the impersonators take their place, they know their details, they come back to the loved ones and they try to gain control over them. And this is what spiritism is about. It's not real dead people coming back, it's impersonators who are deceiving. Yeah, and yeah. God has warned us because he loves us. And uh, I'm doing this broadcast today, Dr. Bill, because I love the people out there. And I, I was one. I was once um, uh, one of those who didn't want to know anything about the blood of Jesus, but I'm so glad now that uh, I've learned to exactly. experience uh, his, uh, uh, his friendship and a relationship with him. There's nothing like that on earth. Yeah, if we can save one Kissinger, one Hillary Clinton, one Obama, and have them tell the truth of what they've been through and the curses they've had through generations, if we can spare one person who's a mass abortionist like Henry Morgenthaler years ago that God commanded me to fight against, who's a surviving Auschwitz Jew, who's a Sabbatean Satanist and a blood sacrifice maniac who is cursed through this. If we can spare one of these, how many people in our world can we save? If you think it's peripheral, get out your Bible, get out your newspaper, and just use your common sense and your decency and understand that you have to understand the spiritual science, which you explain very succinctly in your book, which fits in perfectly with your Bible and your brain. The Forbidden Secret at BeforeUs.com. BeforeUs.com. Back in two weeks. Carly Schlanger tomorrow. Bob Chapman. You don't want to miss it. <laughs>